Hi everyone. In the last class, uh, we discussed a lot on magnetic boundary condition and boundary condition is over with last class. Today, from today onwards, we are getting into time varying fields. So uh, that is uh, what uh, we really mean by electromagnetics. Like uh, whatever you learned till now, that is uh, for making uh, the understanding of time varying fields easier. So basically the subject is meant to understand whatever will be taught from now on. In that, the first time varying concept we have is from Faraday's law. That is something that you know from uh, long time. So we are just going to revisit the same thing again. Okay, because of that, this also I said in the last class means once upon a time uh, Christian Easter, he was conducting some experiment. People say he found out it accidentally, people say. So when he was conducting an experiment uh, with a, uh, a, a, with conductors, means he was having this battery, uh, a battery and uh, uh, he was having a conductor and some current was passing through it. So whenever he switched on the, uh, uh, switched on this, uh, uh, current carrying path, so definitely some current will pass through this, so that your electron from flow from this direction to the, uh, some current is passing through this. So whenever this current started passing, uh, he found, uh, he observed that a nearby kept a magnetic needle, it started deflecting. So that is how uh, we came to our conclusion that electric current is a source of magnetism, right? Since this electric current, uh, it produces a magnetism like this that we already seen in the last class. Since this produces a magnetism like this and it interacts with ne this needle, that is why uh, we got this magnetic needle rotating. So electric current is a source of magnetism. That was our understanding from that. So afterwards, uh, like uh, it, it happened in 1831. So afterwards, everybody was looking for the reverse process, like whether it is possible to bring electricity from magnetism, right? Both are uh, in independent things, right? We can have magnetism, we can have ele ele electric field due to this charge. So whether we can uh, produce electricity or electric current from magnetism. So that reverse question was answered by Michael Faraday in after 11 years after 1831. So that is uh, what we are ge getting into. So just similar to uh, Easter, Faraday also conducted experiment okay. on time varying fields basically. So he took a coil like this, a coil right like this and he placed a ma uh, what I can say ma magnet and uh, for the first time he did not make it move. So your conductor is there and there is a magnetic field. Since your magnet is the uh, is there, since your magnet is not moving, it is just uh, uh, there. So you will have a magnetic field B, right? This magnetic field will be existing, and that magnetic field will be constant all over the space, right? Everywhere means at, at any point instant or not all over the space it not it is, it is not constant, but at every point in space the value is constant with respect to time, right? So such a thing when he observed that he had a galvanometer connected to the two ends like this, like one end connected with this and another end connected with this end. And when he checked and uh, like your conductor is under a magnetic field and nothing happened in the galvanometer as his expectation was. So afterwards, uh, the second part he did was that again he took the coil and this time he, he had a ma magnet also and he started moving this magnet. So whenever he started moving this magnet, what he observed was that uh, the galvanometer deflected in one direction, like you know, first he take the magnet and he moved it inside like this, in this direction, then your ga his galvanometer deflected in one direction, clear? So in the second part, the, whichever magnet he moved in, when he moved it backwards, he got an another interesting observation that his galvanometer was deflecting in the other direction. Understood. So this was this was his observation, or this this was his uh, uh, experiment. So uh, one interesting part here is that when you take the second and the third cases, like this case as well as this case, in these two cases, in space, 
uh, around this coil or inside this coil, inside this coil in space, your magnetic field intensity or uh, intensity is changing with respect to time because whenever this magnet is moving inside, definitely like it is having here it is having a magnetic field defined. So you it's it is not going to change. So whenever it is moving, whenever it is coming inside, then here magnetic field will be increasing. Whenever this one is moving out, outside, then here the, your magnetic field will be reducing, right? So there is a change in the magnetic field around that uh, in the uh, linked with that coil. So that is what he observed, and that magnetic uh, flux, right? A field is B, then whatever flux flux is uh, passing through here, some of it, uh, some of it due to this uh, magnet will be linking with the coil or will be passing through this coil, right? So he related with that that whatever magnetic flux is linking with the coil like here you have lot of uh, one second here in this figure you have let me say the magnetic field is like where when you take the magnetic field around this ma magnet then you can see that some will be passing through this like this and some might not pass through this right. So all of them all of them contribute to the flux by produced by magnet. But whatever is passing through this particular co coil that we call as the flux linkage of the coil, understood? Flux linkage linked with the or that we call as flux linkage, understood? So, so uh, that will change when uh, that will change whenever uh, your magnet is moving. So that was his observation, right? Whenever your magnet start moving, definitely your flux linkage will change. So that was Faraday's ex uh, experiment. From that he identified that. Here yeah, you have uh, the means uh, when your galvanometer is moving means what across these two terminals across these two terminals you have an EMF induced right. So whenever your uh, magnet is moving then there is an induced EMF produced. So that was basically Faraday's experiment. Then instead of uh, this way means in, in, uh, instead of uh, using a uh, using the magnet moving when he tried the coil move then also again same thing happened he got induced EMF. Thus he understood that whether whenever there is a relative motion between uh, between the coil and magnet an induced EMF is produced. Okay. So it, uh, wh what is the cause for that whether you move the coil or the uh, magnet the, the, there is a time varying magnetic field produced right with respect to time your magnetic field is varying in space right. So that produces an induced voltage that uh, that voltage now still now we call it as voltage or potential difference right. Now here on here we are calling it as electromotive force understood here we are calling it as electromotive force. So that is what Fa Faraday's law states. So induced EMF is a, and a, in any closed circuit is equal to the time rate of change of magnetic flux linkage by the circuit. Okay. He understood that when, when, when he tried uh, uh, different ways like first, uh, first he is so, uh, so uh, added means what I can say he increased the relate, uh, speed of this relative motion means this rate uh, the rate of change of magnetic flux he increased it then he found that he have more induced EMF then he started increasing the number of turns again he understood that then again induced EMF is more. Clear. So with that he came to a formulation that your induced EMF is equal to minus d lambda by dt where lambda is the flux linkage, lambda is the flux linkage and which is also which is equal to what minus n d psi by dt. We will discuss about minus sign afterwards but this is equal to n uh, in, mag, in magnitude of it is equal to n d psi by dt where your lambda equal to n psi is the flux linkage. Wh then what is lambda? Lambda is the flux which is associated with the, uh, which is the uh, which is passing through each turn. When you know the flux passing through one turn, then n psi, uh, which is psi, then n psi will give you what the total flux linkage. So this is what uh, Faraday's law formulation is. V, uh, v is minus n d psi. By. Now <laughs> let us get into why this negative sign is there. So as we have already saw V EMF is given by minus D lambda by DT or minus N D psi by DT. So this negative sign that is introduced to by uh, lens and how it is the, how it is coming let us see. Like what it states is that the negative sign indicates that induced EMF acts in such a way as to oppose the flux producing it right. Then only I can let me say the conservation of en energy is quite true like uh, your magnet is here and uh, you are pushing it down 
you are pushing it down and whenever your magnet is pushed down then what will happen then uh, your magnetic field around this coil is changing so that you have an induced EMF right when I say there is an induced EMF when I say there is an induced EMF okay at some point you have an induced EMF it means that some current is flowing through this coil okay so what will be the direction of that current then uh, uh, let me say in uh, whenever your magnet is moving what will happen then an induced EMF will uh, occur in this coil so that there will be a current. What will be the direction of current? It can be like this or it can be the other way right in which way it will be okay. It will be in a way, a way that whenever you have the uh, first what you had first uh, you are moving the magnet and you got an induced EMF because of that what will have what happen you have a current which is induced in this uh, coil when now it is a current carrying conductor right so when you have a current carrying conductor this coil itself will produce a magnetic field what will be the direction of that magnetic field if you are applying like the uh, current is flowing in this direction let me ask, uh, let us assume current is flowing in this direction then if you uh, apply right hand grip rule uh, what will be the direction of uh, direction of magnetic field direction of magnetic field will be op opposite to the direction of this one right now let me say uh, the direction of current was opposite like uh, now it is flowing in this direction let me say the direction of current is opposite like this in that case the direction of magnetic field will be downwards so uh, the current can flow in two direction either in in this uh, either in this direction or in the opposite direction which will create the magnetic field also in opposite direction. What Lenz's law is saying that uh, 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 this mag uh, what is producing this induced EMF whenever you are taking the uh, ma magnet inside basically what you are doing you are increasing the field inside the coil. So to reduce it you should you need an oppo uh, magnetic field in opposition. So this magnetic field which is uh, induced due to this induced current that uh, that should be in opposite direction for that the current current should flow in which direction current should flow in this direction current should flow in this direction so that is uh, what is meant by Lenz's law understood Lenz's law states that induced EMF acts in such a way as to oppose the flux producing it for not the oppose the flux but the oppose the change in flux producing it okay well, if it if we are taking out this magnet in the opposite direction Okay, one second. Let let us make it more clear. If I am taking this magnet, if I am taking this magnet in the opposite direction, that means what? That means that my uh, uh, B magnetic magnetic field inside this it was having a high value before. Now it has reduced to some extent. So that reduction that is that is causing my induced EMF that variation in flux. So to avoid that what the, this coil induced EMF should do it should produce a current in such a way that in such a way that uh, this magnetic field what it, it, uh, now already a magnetic field is there and aiding magnetic field also should be there so that that reduction due to taking out of this mag taking out now this magnet created a reduction in magnetic field inside that but again in the same direction if I got a magnetic field here that will what that will try to compensate that effect so that is what happens or that is what is deciding the direction of current and that is what is meant by Lenz's law. So this effect this is described by Lenz's law and uh, more evidently what we can say is this the direction of current in the circuit will produce an induced magnetic field whose direction will be opposing the change in original magnetic field. This concept is very useful in, in analyzing uh, the theor theories uh, when, when it comes to electric machine that you might have already done also. So that is Lenz's law. So it is uh, that is Lenz's law. Now, now let us get into formulation. So this V EMF is given by what minus uh, a d, psi, d lambda by dt or minus n d psi by dt that, that is general. When your number of turns is 1 means the case I am giving here when your number of turns is 1 then we can write that equation as what in terms of my uh, this n will become 1 here. So it will be minus uh, d psi by dt where psi is the magnetic flux which is uh, linked with that coil with that linked with that one turn coil right. So uh, here we are applying our theory that V EMF means what it is basically potential. So potential we already defined and potential is given by what 
over this closed loop whenever you have a coil over this closed loop e dot dl will give you what over this closed loop e dot dl will give you the potential vemf right vemf which is equal to what which is given as equal to minus d psi by dt where psi means what psi is flux flux is magnetic field intensity into area when you have a loop like this or when you have a general loop like this then we can write it as b dot ds will give you the flux minus d by dt of integral over whatever surface you are considering b dot ds will give you what minus d psi by dt or d phi by dt means which is the rate of change in flux clear so we are changing this formula in this way so here interesting part is that here you have a closed integral over the loop and here you have an open integral over the surface right whenever we see this, see this we will directly get into applying stokes theorem so using stokes theorem uh, we can uh, change this formulation so main remark here is that what we can see from this equation that is what i will say in this slide so what we can see particularly from in this equation is that you see this this emf is equal, equal is written in terms of was what electric field density and flux uh, rate of inner flux is written in terms of the magnetic flux density so this basically this electric and magnetic field are interrelated in a time varying situation right so this in this formulation we got what e dot dl on one side and b dot ds on the other side or they are related they this e and b are related now in a time varying case till now we, we we were able to deal with e and b separately in electrostatics or magnetostatics we were able to deal with electric field density and magnetic field separately but now on we have to deal with deal with uh, deal with it uh, together or they are interrelated in a time varying situation okay and this variation of the flux is leading uh, uh, leads to the emf induced <coughs> uh, before getting into the other things like um, axel's equation and all let us get into uh, uh, what all possibilities are there for having an induced emf what, uh, so uh, in faraday's law what we discussed is that whenever you have a time rate rate of change of flux right that that, that can produce a, an induced emf so it can be possible in uh, several ways one is that you have a loop sta kept stationary and you are moving this magnetic field understood or uh, not, not moving this magnetic field you are having a stationary loop and your magnetic field whether it is moving or not the your magnetic field the uh, magnetic field vector b that is varying okay so that is one possibility that you have a time varying magnetic field with you and you have a stationary field so definitely what will happen an induced emf will be produced there, then there is another possibility that <coughs> then there is another possibility uh, that possibility is that uh, let me say uh, le let me say your uh, loop this time varying uh, this loop is time varying or let me say you are keeping this magnet as it is static magnetic field no change and let me say this coil you are going to rotate then what will happen when when this coil is moving or rotating then definitely the flux linkage associated or flux passing through this coil will change what we see in normal ac or dc machines right whenever this coil starts rotating then your flux linkage will change so that also can pre produce induced dmf then the third possibility is that both uh, uh, both your uh, means what time varying loop area in it and time varying magnetic field means both your uh, loop area as well as your magnetic field both are varying that also is that so there are three possibilities for getting an induced emf the we will get into one by one by one this we this you might have already seen in machine theory and all right statically induced emf dynamically induced emf right so same thing only we will get into an electromagnetic perspective first let us see the stationary loop in a time varying magnetic field the simple simplest part so let me say uh, you have a coil like this as shown in this figure and you have a uh, Ma magnetic field so here it is written as increasing b of t because it is not about a direction of b right means uh, yeah direction is given but here uh, in this way your b is increasing so right it is quite uh, what you can expect here is that let me say in the middle of this you have a solenoid so definitely it will produce what a uh, uh, you have a solenoid in the middle of this let me say okay so this will produce a magnetic field that uh, magnetic field direction is given by this b of t so whenever your magnetic field uh, the current flowing through the solenoid is changing 
then apparently your magnetic field also will change that will produce and induce the mf in the circuit so that is what is uh, meant by this ma uh, magnetic field which is external okay this uh, this external that is external magnetic field and due to that you will have due to the change in that uh, uh, b of t you will have an induced emf in this coil so the emf induced by the time varying current in a stationary loop is called as transformer emf it is uh, very specifically written also what the time varying current in a stationary loop so as i said the uh, one solenoid you place there you have a current flowing through this understood like you have a solenoid solenoid placed like this and you have a current flowing through it okay you have a current flowing through it so what will happen then you have a magnetic field like that so around that you are placing this coil around that you are placing this coil when that happens what will happen whenever you are this uh, this uh, potential or whenever whatever current you are giving here that current whenever it is changing that current whenever it is changing what will happen the magnetic field also will change that will induce an emf uh, in, in the coil whichever is placed around it so that is the theory of what the statically induced emf or stationary uh, the stationary loop in a varying magnetic field so uh, here it is the just uh, like faraday's law so here uh, one interesting part is that the in the equation we we have seen that it is minus d by dt integral over the surface b dot ds right so here it uh, your magnetic field is not changing with respect to space frankly it is what is happening it is changing uh, not with respect to space variables means uh, we are not shif uh, shifting the uh, the coil but in turn what we are doing is respect to time we are changing it right so uh, the same thing uh, 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 here is an here is two parts here one is what the uh, differentiation in time and we are integrating over the surface of what b dot ds that is the thing right so uh, since uh, one is differentiation in time domain and another one is what integration in the uh, in, in space right o over the over the surface or, or in, in space the space and time both are what independent variables so we can uh, take this minus d by dt inside what the integration so it will become minus integral over the surface d by dt of b dot ds understood just because why we are doing that because this uh, differentiation of the time and integration over space are independent operation because of that we are able to take this inside once we take that inside uh, now your b magnetic field flex, uh, field intensity b sorry magnetic flux density b that can, that can change with respect to space as well as what time right that will change with respect to space as well as time so to uh, accommodate that what we are doing uh, to accommodate that we are uh, when we take d by dt inside b dot ds it will become what dou b by dot t dou b by dot t dot ds so your induced emf you can write as my uh, integral over the loop e dot d equal to minus integral over the surface dou b by dot t dot ds okay now this is the time so this is what we got this is the time now we have seen here that this is what uh, there is a closed the loop uh, or line line integral and here is a surface integral of over the open surface so we will definitely apply stokes theorem when we apply stokes theorem e dot dl will, will become what curl of the vector the e dot ds right e dot dl e dot dl will become del cross e dot ds other side is the same uh, do, minus do, do b by dot t dot ds right so when you are inde integral uh, uh, when you say that lh is equal to rh so integrals are same it means that the integrands also should be same which are the del cross c on this side and minus do b by dot t on the other side so we uh, get the equation that del cross e equal to minus do b by dot t this is the case when this is the case when you have a time varying field here as you can see electric field curl of electric field and the, the differentiation of uh, b with respect to time they are getting interrelated right they are getting interrelated that is what happens in time varying field another interesting aspect is that del cross e was zero right del cross e was zero in your uh, uh, electrostatics that is our one basic Ma maxwell's equation that we derived right but here in when it comes to time varying field we are seeing the first modification in maxwell's equation what is that it is that del cross e is not zero but what it is del cross e is minus dou b by dot t in till now what we had we have we place a stationary charge like this then we have our uh, electric field lines going just out so outwards like this or inwards if you have a charge like what 
if if you have a positive charge then everything outwards otherwise everything inwards in terms of lines right and you are able to say that del cross e is zero or there is no curl happening for what electric field intensity but now when i say there is an induced emf and there is some current flowing uh, there is an induced emf and there is some current flowing then what it says is that your electric field is having some curl your electric field is having some curl it is not like uh, the, uh, it is not conservative then that is when we say our field is not conservative so that uh, that, that uh, property has got changed when you come to time varying field so del cross e equal to minus w by dot t is our first modification happening in maxwell's equation okay now let us see uh, some other things also here so be, uh, before getting into the second part means as i said dynamically induced emf or motional emf when uh, instead of your magnetic field varying you can also do what you can also change the uh, uh, position of this coil also right so before that let us see uh, some uh, one more basic concept that the force on a charged particle under magnetic field right so whenever you have an electric field whenever you have an electric field like set up like this and you have a charge here so uh, the, the, let me say this charge is some plus q then under an electric field what will happen this charge will experience a force and it will start moving downwards right f equal to qe so that is a basic relation that is about what electric uh, under an electric field what what will happen to charge it is quite easy to understand right so since uh, uh, the direction of force will become uh, uh, what same or the opposite direction uh, de depending on what polarity of charge that you know getting into uh, motional uh, emf or uh, what happens let us just see uh, the force on a charged particle under magnetic field since uh, when you place a charge under magnetic field then it will experience a force so that is basically derived from experiments that that force whichever we call uh, whichever the uh, we the force due to magnetic field on charge let it be fm and that charge be q and uh, uh, it is moving with a velocity vector u in a magnetic field okay so uh, uh, in a magnetic field so under that condition then uh, we say the magnetic uh, the force is equal to q into u cross b understood so uh, a moving charge not a static charge like you have a uh, magnetic field you have a magnetic field like this and uh, uh, you have a magnetic field like this and your charge is moving okay you have a magnetic field like this and uh, uh, your charge your charge is moving in the, in a, in a particular direction like this then uh, under that condition this is b and the blue line is the direction in which your charge is moving okay under that condition the magnetic field is given by q into u cross b so basically this force is uh, what force force is in the direction of the cross product of u means velocity velocity and the magnetic flux density so when uh, in the as per this figure uh, when you are this red line is in the direction of magnetic flux density and blue line is in the direction of velocity so uh, the u cross b means what u cross b means from u to u is blue line and the red is velocity so you have to t uh, turn your right handed screw from at this point and turn from what u to b when you turn it from u to uh, b like this you will see that your force is basically uh, uh, your force will be t towards inside this uh, plane like this not in blue color means uh, in, inside the plane like this so that is uh, given by the direction of the force on this particular charge so fm equal to q into u cross b so this fm is perpendicular to what perpendicular to the plane containing u as well as b this fm is perpendicular to the plane containing u as well as b so that is an interesting difference here the difference is that when you are considering about uh, the force by electric electric field that we have seen in the last slide it was just q into e it is in the same direction in which your field is applied right in the, so uh, f equal to ma and your charge also will move in the same direction just uh, in, in, as in which direction your electric field is there or force is there right that is uh, then you can say that work some work is done on that thing okay or you can uh, make the electric field to do some work on that charge but here it is different when you have the cross product here u means what the velocity of charge right or whichever direction your char charge is moving 
the force is in a direction which is perpendicular to the direction in which your charge is moving. So basically when you take fm dot uh, uh, the distance fm dot d uh, what you will get you will get it as 0 because both the vectors are perpendicular to each other fm as well as the velocity vectors are perpendicular to each other so work work done by the system under the time varying field condition it, it, uh, the contribution will not be from whom will not be from the magnetic field so that is an important point. And when your E and B are present, F is given by Fe plus Fm. So when you want to impart some energy to the system, what is going to help is Fe only, uh, not Fm to some, uh, Fm to much extent. So e, Fe is something that uh, using which you can impart some energy to the system. Fm may be used, uh, can be used to change the direction, but it uh, uh, it's that we cannot uh, uh, transfer energy. So that is an important point. So when you consider that, uh, it, when you combine it, F become Q into E plus U cross B. Uh, if you come out, this equation is called as Lorentz force equation. Okay, this base equation is called as Lorentz uh, force equation. And uh, it has got several applications like image processing or even when you take a cathode ray uh, uh, tube or uh, 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 similar things like that, you will see electric field and magnetic field used on a moving charge so that to divert its, uh, 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 so that to uh, what I can say control its movement. So such applications are there in a lot, lot many places even up to electron microscope where your electron is moving, you use electric and magnetic field to uh, focus that uh, electron beam to a particular way you want. So such applications are there a lot here, uh, on, on this principle. You can uh, uh, see about that. Now similarly, once we, first we discussed about charge. Now if you are having a current carrying conductor and you have a magnetic field, the red is in the current carrying conductor, the blue line is the magnetic field. When you have a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field, then also again what is that current means what the flow of charges. So basically your free electrons are moving in, in a magnetic field. So because of that you will have a force on that. So in order to formulate that on a current carrying element we can consider a small element of what IDL right. In a current carrying element we can consider a small element IDL. So that IDL uh, I am changing it here. What is current? Current is basically the rate of change of charge right. The rate, the time rate of change of uh, charge we call as current. So I, I can write as what dq by dt and into dl. So uh, this differentiation if I just uh, rearrange the equation it cannot be also written as what dq into dl by dt. dl means what the, uh, uh, the distance right so the current element its length. dl by dt will give you what the velocity of the thing right. So it will become dq into u. So uh, there it was what q into u cross b right. If there uh, whatever charge for that small element we can take it as what dq into u. So your equation will, uh, your ideal will become equal to dq into u. So basically when you consider that there are charges here and the force experiences again what our basic equation which is q into u cross b. Here in, in the place of q you have dq for the particular ideal element right. So dq into u cross b or uh, that dq into u right dq into u that is already we got it as what ideal. So I can also write it as what I into dl cross b. So that is for a current element. When you want uh, this, this, uh, this is for really dfm. This dfm means a small force. Similarly, if you integrate over the whole length, you will get what? You will get the total force uh, due to this particular current carrying conductor. So this also is. Now, let us see uh, motional EMF. Okay. Uh, means uh, now see, we saw that there is a force on the conductor. So similarly, uh, uh, so similarly, uh, when you are having a conduct coil like this, this is like uh, what happens in DC generators or AC generators. So when you have a, con a conduct co coil like this and in a constant magnetic field, means you, are, you have a static magnetic field and you have a coil. If you are rotating this coil, what will happen? If you are rotating this coil, what will happen? Then uh, your flux linkage is changing with respect to time due to the movement of this thing, right? So the force basically, the, the force basically whenever it is move, uh, whenever you are uh, once it, uh, because of that what will happen, we will have an induced EMF. So uh, once you have an induced EMF then there will be current flowing as well. Now it is a current carrying conductor in magnetic field. So you will have a force on this thing. So that we call as what Fm equal to Q into U cross B, right. 
So, uh, uh, here means that is the base equation. So, here that motionary electric field we can write as what F m divided by Q or that will be equal to U cross B clear. So, uh, that th this is what this is the mo this is called as the motional electric field because this one uh, this force is uh, happen how this force is happening due to what due to this uh, motion of this conductor. So, uh, we EM, uh, the induced EMF uh, here uh, e it is basically E dot DL there we will apply this motional electric field and that will be equal to what U cross B dot DL because you already got it as U cross B dot DL. So, uh, this is called as motional EMF or the flex cutting EMF. Here if we apply Stokes theorem, it, here it is glossed over, uh, integral over the line L and here it is what again uh, 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 over the line. So, on both sides if we apply Stokes theorem or integral over the surface we, surface we will get a del cross E m and here it will be del cross U cross B. So, that we can equate it as what del cross E m equal to del cross U cross B. This equation is in particular about what? It is about when you are talking about motional E m of like in a, what happens in the motor and all. So, generator and all. So, that is about Faraday's law and we derived the Maxwell mod, was modified Ma Maxwell's equation. Next class we will see another Maxwell's equation uh, which is going to get modified. So, uh, there we will discuss what is meant by the concept of displacement current and uh, we will see uh, the, the modification in Maxwell's equation also. With the next lecture our fourth module will be completed then we will get into the fifth module. So, attempt the review questions. Thank you.